Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to be reviewing a loco from one of my favourite railways and that is the Southern Railway. <laughs> So the loco that I'm going to be reviewing today is one that I bought at a train fair a little while ago and it is this. It's a Hornby Schools Class of course from the Southern Railway. Now you might remember I've reviewed one of these before. The one I reviewed last time was this very nice looking uh, BR Black Schools Class. However, when I got it out of the box, it was a bit of a disappointment, in fact a disaster. The chimney had broken off in the packaging, there were nasty glue marks all over it where it had been assembled badly. What I think are firebox fusible plugs were all missing off it, so that, that looked really, really bad. And overall it was just far too fragile. And that was three or four years ago, and since then I've just been really reluctant to pick up any more Hornby Schools class models. However, as I say, this time I have been tempted because this one was so, so lovely. As you can see, it's in the Malachite green, which is not something I have in, uh, well, at least on a Schools class at the moment. So, the price then. So, these, if we're talking RRP from Hornby, are extremely expensive. £160.99. So that's an awful lot of money, obviously it is, and these are not brand new models either, these have been around for a little while. However, if I remember correctly, there's a little surprise with these, which does sort of justify that price. However, obviously, if you don't want to pay £170 nearly for a loco, well, £161 to be precise, you can go to the retailers, obviously, and get them a little bit cheaper, and Hattons do indeed have schools classes, uh, various different liveries and various different versions of them available. So if you want to check those out, there's a link down in the description. But for now, this one's Wellington. I'm going to get this one out, and hopefully, fingers crossed, it won't have any of the problems that my previous one did. Okay, let's give this a try. So yes, as I say, this was actually second-hand. It's very rare that I do buy second-hand locos to review, only because you have no idea what the previous seller might have done to it, and if lots of people are watching this trying to decide whether a product's any good or not, it would be a bit unfair of me to be showing rubbishy products that people have faffed around with. However, I did have this out at the train fair, and it looked to be almost in brand new mint condition, uh, which is why I bought it. However, it did not have a label in the sleeve, and so I've made a fake one for you, as you can see, which, thinking about it, was completely unnecessary, really. I suppose I could have just read the information out to you. But either way, no, I wanted to do the thing properly. So this is R2745 Southern Railway 440 Schools Class, and it is Wellington, as you can see there. So there we go, that's that. I will just flip the box over so that you can see the back there, where, as usual, there is a brief history of the schools class, and as always, feel free to pause and read that if you'd like to. And then on the far end, we've got a real photo, not just a, a line drawing or something, but a real photo of one of the schools class in action, which often is a bit of inspiration for you, isn't it, as a modeler? It's nice to see them in their prime sort of thing. Uh, so that you know what you've got to sort of achieve with your modelling, which is pretty cool. However, that's not for us today. We're going to get this out and find out what this one is like. So I will take the outer sleeve off to reveal the next interesting thing. And uh, yeah, I've got this in the packaging the wrong way. So as a second-hand model, this is actually a slightly older model. And in fact, it didn't come in the block of ice packaging. <laughs> it came in this, which I don't like for two reasons. First of all, of course, you need an engineering degree to find out how to get the damn thing open because it really is quite a lengthy process. And second of all, it's quite hard foam. It doesn't do a very good job of protecting them. I've many a time had locos damaged in packaging like this. So I just borrowed the block of ice packaging from my previous schools class and uh, just put it in there for the review. However, the foam packaging did in fact damage it on the way home from the train fare because the chimney had broken off in the pack, but I've managed to fix that. Um, so even though I could probably attribute that to the previous seller, this is the second of three Hornby Schools classes I've had which had lost the chimney in the package. So make of that what you will without me actually saying they're bad quality. 160 quid's a, a lot of money for a bad quality model, but uh, hopefully this one's a little bit better. Okay, so we do have paperwork. Let me get this one out. So this, of course, is for the Hornby School class. There we go, front cover with the general information. Then inside we have quite a nice set of diagrams, really. It's the standard issue stuff, isn't it? So you've got lubrication, fitting accessories, of which there are quite a lot with this, so it's worth reading that up. Body removal, essential for servicing and DCC fitting, and indeed there is a bit about DCC fitting over there on the right-hand side. 
So there we go, those are the instructions. I will now take apart the block of ice packaging for you, or the blister packaging as it's supposed to be called, I think. There we go, and we have the detail bag on the top, so let me show you that. So yes, there's quite a lot of stuff in there. We've got the brake rigging for the Loco and Tender. We have what appear to be steps for the side of the Loco, or possibly Tender as well. We have what appear to be some sort of pipes, so probably cylinder drain cocks, but if I looked at the instructions longer, I'd probably figure that out. Cab doors, NEM pockets, uh, probably a NEM coupling for the front, yes, and some various um, chain link or screw link couplings look like screw link to me. So quite a lot to fit yourself in there. So again, quite puzzling for the high RRP. But as I say, there is a really cool feature on this model. Whether or not it actually justifies £161, I'm not convinced, but it does at least account for part of that massive price tag. So with that, let's get this open and take a look. Okay. So, let's do the tender first then and we'll save the loco. So obviously the first thing you notice is just the lovely livery. I don't know about you, but I love the malachite green. And uh, I don't have enough locos in that livery, given how much I love it. So I really, really couldn't resist this, as you can imagine, at the train fair. Yeah, it's got a fair amount of weight to it. It's not particularly heavy, but not criminally light either. It's just average in its weight, I would say. But as you can see, it looks relatively modern in terms of its level of detail, which is really good. And then the second thing, which is not really a surprise to me because I've, I've had these out before, but it might be a surprise to you to learn just how heavy and impressive this thing is in the hands. So first of all, yes, extremely, extremely heavy. You're not expecting it to be as heavy as this when you get it out. In fact, if Wren made a schools class or Hornby Double O or Dublo, you'd expect it to be this heavy. And the reason is, the reason why this Hornby one is so heavy is because it is made of metal. There is a die cast body on this. So the entire boiler and firebox here, as you can see, is all made of metal. And that is just a fantastic, fantastic feature from Hornby. Normally you don't get that with larger locos like this. Hornby normally only sort of afford to do it on the smaller tank engines and things. But that's not the case with this. We've actually got a full metal body. In fact, it's only the cab and I think smoke box that are made of plastic. So that is amazing. Puzzlingly though, there are traction tires fitted, which is really quite frustrating. Why this needed traction tyres, I have no idea. In fact, I'm pretty sure it would have been a good puller without them. But uh, either way, yeah, that's what we're stuck with. So I will hold Loco and Tender together. There we go. And that is what they look like together. Obviously, we do have to plug the Loco and Tender into each other, which is a real faff. I hate having to do that. But I will do it because without doing that, obviously, the thing won't work. So here's a bit of history on the lovely Schools Class locomotives. And after that, we will take a nice close look at this together. So introduced to the Southern Railway in 1930, these schools class locos were probably one of the most successful designs of Richard Maunsell. They earned the title of the most powerful 440 locomotives in Europe at the time, and they were classified by British Railways as a 5P, which is very, very high for a 440. The schools were unusual because 440s were becoming quite old-fashioned towards the end of the 1920s, and yet here we are in 1930 with a brand new batch of 440s being produced, in fact in order to replace older 440s, so there's no even upgrade to 460 or anything. And there are actually a massive improvement over certain 460 designs as well, which is really impressive. In total, 40 schools locos were produced over five years, and luckily three of those still remain in preservation. All right, so there is a nice close look at Wellington, my beautiful Malachite Green Schools class. And this model is really quite bittersweet for me because I love it. I mean, just look at the livery. It's a 440. Look at the smoke deflectors and the gorgeous shape of it. And then consider all the die cast and how heavy the model is. Yeah, it's, it's easy to fall in love with these. And I think I more or less have done. However, I can't help but sort of form the same conclusions that I formed with the last schools class I had, my BR Black one. And that is that it's far too fragile and basically ruined by a little bit of poor quality, not just in the assembly, but in the design as well. Because I'm still seeing loads and loads of glue marks all over the model and parts of it that are just dropping off in the hand because they're not sturdy enough. Now, as I say, the glue marks and things I cannot blame on Hornby as I'd like to. Uh, because this was second hand and there's every chance that the previous owner is to blame and not Hornby. So I won't do that to be fair. However, what I will point out is that my BR Black version was exactly the same in that regard. And that was brand new. I bought that new from a retailer. So you'll have to draw your own conclusions from that. 
But basically my problem with this is that a lot of the separately fitted detail and the way that it's designed to fit onto the body is quite incompetently done. To my mind, the best designs are where the separately fitted details slot into place and they stay there without any glue at all. And the only reason you have glue is just a tiny, tiny amount just to hold it in place so that it doesn't come out again. But there are parts of this model that seem to be held in place entirely with glue. A good example of that is the chimney. It just sits on top and is glued in place. And as I've seen on three occasions with all three, it doesn't hold. They drop off invariably in the packaging. And when a user finds that they've got to repair a model straight out of the box, that does have an impact on their perceived quality of the model. And that's certainly true with me as well. You've got the pipework in front of the cab there, which appears to be glued together, and then they've sort of painted the glue, which gives it that weird blocky texture. Yeah, there's just something about it that just looks a little bit cobbled together. And in fact, while I was holding it up for the camera a moment ago, one of these handrails on the cab was resting on my finger, and it broke. As you can see, it's now loose. Now, yeah, of course, I shouldn't have been touching it, I suppose. However, I wasn't being rough with it, it really was just resting on my finger and it wasn't as though the whole weight of my hand crashed into it or something. I don't want to sound like a complete big head, but I kind of have quite a lot of experience handling models. I do it on a daily basis as part of my job. It's very, very rare that I will actually damage a loco by just holding it up. And let's face it, if just holding a model can cause it to be damaged, then there's a good chance it's a little bit too fragile. So a bit of a smarter design would have done a lot better with this model. However, it looks superb, doesn't it? And if you can actually get it to your door in its box with all of the details still fitted, I think there's a slim chance of that actually happening. But on the off chance that you're actually able to achieve that, it is a beautiful looking model. So let's take a look at some of the paintwork. We have the malachite uh, banding on the boiler, which is okay. There's you know a few messy parts of it if you're looking really, really close, but from any sort of distance, it looks absolutely fine. And the model is covered in lining, as you can see, along the running board here, which is also die cast, by the way, you've got the yellow lining. The side of the cab is beautifully painted. In fact, the paintwork is not poor quality. I should say that outright because it's very good. Look at the lining around the cab. You've got the gold lining around the glazed windows. I should say they're glazed and on the front as well. Look, you've got the lining. The front windows even appear to have windscreen wipers on them. I don't know whether they would be called windscreen wipers, but you know what I mean, a little wiper, if that is indeed what it is. It certainly looks like one. And then you've got the running number 902 in that beautiful Southern Railway font. So that looks fantastic. The Wellington nameplate is done nicely on the side, as you can see. Um, I think Brighton was the BR Black one, and the nameplate wasn't very good at all on that. Well, that's not true with this one. That looks fantastic. And then even the smoke deflectors look, which I love, by the way. Let's just have a moment to appreciate smoke deflectors. They've got lining on them too, so paintwork gets a thumbs up for sure. And go on then, I will show you the inside of the cab, because the paintwork's pretty astonishing inside there as well. So there are parts of the model where no expense has been spared, and I'm not saying that this model has been deliberately designed to be super cheap and then sold for high prices, because at least there is a high level of detail, there's a lot of die cast, the paintwork is top notch. I think it's just a slight incompetence in the way some of the details have been designed, as I've already said. Let's take a look at some more of the separately fitted parts. Then we have the very large reverser rod here, which is quite clearly made of plastic, and you can tell because there's some quite unsightly flashing going on there where it's not come out of the mould properly. Again, that's a bit of a shame. I don't see why that couldn't have been made of metal, really. You've got a lot of pipework around the boiler, which is all made of plastic as far as I can tell. So there's some right here behind the smoke box. We've got the part in front of the cab, which I've already told you about. And then underneath the cab, you've got more of that copper colored pipework, which again is quite fragile. You have to, I think the, the advice would be just don't touch it at all because it all sort of flexes and moves in quite a scary way if you actually touch it. But uh, otherwise, yeah, that isn't too bad. The fragility of the detail on the smoke box door isn't actually too bad because the smoke deflectors seem to protect it a little bit, so there's very little chance of your fingers touching it. But as you can see, we've got lamp irons fitted to the smoke box door as well as handrails and such, and quite a lot of molded detail there as well. The buffer beams are pretty sparse, I would say, because most of the detail isn't fitted as standard. You have to fit it yourself if you want to. But we do have a vacuum pipe fitted to the front of the model and then sprung buffers, as you can see. So that's, again, I'm not saying this is a cheap and nasty model by any stretch. They've really done their best to make it detailed. The level of detail is not the question here at all. And of course, we've got the 902 printed onto the buffer beam there as well, which you can see. 
We've got the valve gear on the side here. Is that wall shirts valve gear? I'm, I was never very good at recognizing valve gear, but as you can see, that's nice and fine. That was another point of failure on my old schools class. I had to take some of the valve gear off because it kept jamming. Hopefully that won't happen with this one. And as you can see, we've got green wheels as well, which have been painted up, which is nice, or presumably they've just been molded in green plastic rather than painted, but you get the picture. It's nicely done. Underneath the boiler, it's a bit unfortunate again because you can see just wires which go from the motor area to the front bogey. The front bogey does actually have pickups on it, but they're so weak and again, quite badly designed that they actually don't touch the wheels unless you actually keep positioning them into place. And uh, yeah, I noticed that when I got it out today, having already serviced it, they've already gone back to their original position of not touching the wheels. However, as I say, we have tender pickups on this model, which sort of means that the front bogey pickups aren't necessary anyway. Don't know why they bothered, but uh, I suppose it's nice that they tried, it just didn't work. But never mind, never mind. Okay, so also safety valves, they are made of metal. I forgot to say that, they're made of metal. So that's at least some part of the detail that is. And I think they look a bit better for it. You can tell that those are metallic. Very quickly then, as you can see, the tender has been given the same treatment in terms of the paint job. It looks fantastic, especially with the southern lettering on the side there. The wheel set and underframe looks pretty good as well. There's plenty of molded detail going on there. The wheels are, are black, I've noticed. I don't know whether that's prototypical or not. I'm guessing so, I'm guessing so. But uh, yeah, they're quite hidden, so it doesn't really look out of place that way. The coal load is quite a small coal load, which is quite clever. It is removable, so you can get rid of it if you want to. However, it is quite easy just to put your own sort of real crushed coal on top of that if you want to, so you don't even have to remove it. Although, I don't know why you wouldn't. But I suppose it's quite nice to see a coal load that isn't busting to capacity for a change because of course in real life they wouldn't always be full would they so that's quite a nice attention to detail and then finally around the back we have more southern railways numbering we have the vacuum pipe pre-fitted there as well as lamp irons which i think are pre uh, separately fitted as well and then it, once again a similar buffer beam with more sprung buffers the model has a pre-fitted tension lock NEM coupling on the back, as you can see, and I think those are fitted as standard. There is a pocket on the front bogey, but uh, the nothing's fitted into it, basically. That all comes in the detail bag, which is fair enough because I think most people are going to be pulling loco first with this engine. Although, if you decide that's not the way you want to do things, if you want to live dangerously, then yes, you can fit a front coupling very easily, and I assume, I can't see any reason why not, that it will work just fine. So there we are, the level of detail is fantastic. I think the way that it's assembled and built leaves a bit to be desired. But apart from that, it's a beautiful looking model, isn't it? Now let's find out how it runs, and perhaps more interestingly, how it pulls, because it's very heavy and it's got a traction tire, so maybe this will be a really mighty puller. So there's Wellington down onto the track then, looking fantastic, ready for her first ever performance test. A little bit further down the track, I have set up four Southern Railways coaches, which I'm sure she will be able to manage. Just wait and listen to this. So let's talk a little bit about performance then. Now there's a lot of good and there's a couple of bad points to talk about with performance. So I'll have my little moan to start with. First of all, it's a shame about the traction tyres, which I'm sure you will have seen coming. Yes, two traction tyres are fitted to this, which I consider deeply unnecessary given the weight of the Loco. Um, the Hornby D16 weighs a lot less than this, even though that's die-cast as well, and the pulling power on those is more than adequate. So I'm sure that Hornby would have gotten away just fine without the traction tyres. And uh, why do I hate traction tyres so much? Well, first of all, they make the model a lot less realistic. So you can't wheel slip when you start and stop the loco. It happens immediately. You don't get any sort of wheel slip or slow down or speed up. It just happens suddenly. And that's not particularly realistic. Although with careful driving, of course, you can get away with it. They also tend to fail after an amount of time. A lot of people say, oh, that's not true. Well, I think they're wrong because I've, I've seen enough of these locos with traction tires to know that they do fail. They fail in a couple of different ways. If you're unlucky, and this is what happens with the big traction tires on locos like this, they just go sort of crusty and they just drop off eventually. They, they crumble into nothing. And then of course you're left with a wheel which has a ridge in it where a traction tire would go. And therefore without the tire on it, the wheel is a lot sort of deeper than it needs to be. And so the loco doesn't balance properly and it leans forward and it limps along. It's just a terrible situation. And then you've got the smaller traction tires like the ones used on the Hornby Ringfield motors, for example. Those tend not to just crumble into nothing. They tend to go hard so that they don't um, grip the track or indeed the wheels anymore. So they just spin around and don't actually produce any traction. At least with those, though, the diameter of the wheel isn't changed because the traction tire is still there. So slightly better, but yeah, they're not very good. 
However, the traction tyre has given this an immense amount of power, absolutely immense. So I measured the pulling force of this loco to be 1.1 newtons. Now, not only is that by far the most powerful steam locomotive I've ever measured with or without traction tyres, it's also more powerful than most of my diesels. In fact, it's more powerful than the Class 52 from Helgen. It's even more powerful than the Class 66 from Backman. The only loco in my entire collection that I've measured that has lower pulling power than this is the V-Trains Class 37. So, say what you like about the traction tyres, at least they give us that massive amount of pulling power. The second problem with the way the mechanism slash electrical assembly works on this is the loco to tender drawbar, because we have a plug which you have to plug in yourself, but that's fair enough, once it's plugged in, then it's done but there's no screw that connects the loco and tender together. Instead, you've just got a drawbar with a loop on the end of it, which fits onto a peg, which means every time you pick the loco and tender up, the drawbar comes unhooked, and you're relying on just that wire to hold the loco and tender together, which puts stress on that wire and causes damage. Why they didn't just put a screw on like they do these days, I don't know, but that's a real pain. The other problem, of course, is the bogey front pickups, which I've already talked about. However, on newer versions of this, that has been improved, so at least Hornby saw the inadequacy of that. Besides that, though, there's a five-pole motor inside the loco. It's loco-driven, not tender-driven. You've got a full set of bearings on the wheel set, which is amazing, and absolutely every wheel on the model picks up, and that's very, very rare, including the front bogey wheels, even though they don't really work. At least the pickups are there, so they tried, they tried. So, yes, very good, reliable performance, this. So, let's give you a bit of a demonstration, shall we? Let's set this to forwards, and we'll try the slow-speed crawl. Now, this is second-hand, but I have given it a full service, so it is up to, up to snuff, so to speak. As you can see, that is crawling forwards just incredibly well. <laughs> That is such an amazing slow crawl. At the high speeds, it's a little noisy. I will say it's a bit noisy, but it's perfectly smooth, so a bit of noise, I think, is, is okay. We can live with that. And as you can see, it's beautifully reliable. The express points do nothing to it because, well, it's just got so many pickups. How many pickups per rail has it got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven per rail, 14 in total, so there's an awful lot. Send it over the express points, dead zone's just there. It's joyous to see a 440 performing so nicely. So in that sense, it's way better than any of Backman's models because every single wheel picks up, and that's amazing. So the performance is incredible. In fact, the performance helps to redeem it on the poor quality, doesn't it? Very, very good performance. So let's go and couple to the coaches then and see, set, see how she performs with them. I'm so excited, I can't get my words out. So with a pulling force of over one newton, we're talking what, 12 coaches minimum for this without any problems? So the four coaches that she's coupled to now are just going to be insignificant to her, aren't they, really? However, we will see how she goes along with them, see how she looks. Oops, need to change her into forwards. There we go. Okay. So a very good runner. I wish it didn't have the traction tyres. As I say, I think it would still be powerful without them. But the fact that it has got them means that she is incredibly powerful, which is something, isn't it? So there are lots of other 440s out on the layout today, so see how many of them you can count, and I will put up a poll later on so that you can let me know how many you spotted. First though, we have the Loco that I've talked about a lot already. This is Brighton, the BR Black version of the same model we've just looked at, and she's displaying a bit more of that pulling power I told you about with the slightly larger rate of coaches. I reckon there's five or six on there. And then, as a bit of evidence on what I was saying about the traction tyres, we have the Hornby Railroad Schools class, which is just failed, well, it, one, it had two tyres. One failed quite a while ago, the other one has just failed today, so it's now running with no tyres, which means it wobbles along, and of course the pulling power has been zapped. So yes, that's just a demonstration, and you will see her wheel slipping with those two coaches later on. Okay, enjoy the running session. So from a design point of view, this model's got a lot of problems. Let's not forget it. However, there is something magical about it that it's got a certain charm and a certain beauty, obviously, as it runs. And after all of those repairs I've had to make, it's now the beautiful model that it should have been, and I'm really, really pleased with it.
So you'll have to let me know in the poll which version do you prefer, the Malachite Green or the BR Black? I don't think I need to answer that question, do I? But um, it will be interesting either way to find out what other people prefer. <laughs> So here are my ratings for the beautiful Hornby Schools class. So detail to begin with then has to be a five star. The level of detail is incredibly good. In fact, it's a little bit too good. It's so detailed that you can't put your fingers on the model without putting them on something fragile. So yes, very well detailed to a fault, I would say. The performance is excellent as well. Even though she runs a traction tire, the pulling power is absolutely immense. The slow speed performance is very, very good as well. Besides being a little bit loud, they are very good and smooth runners, so I can't fault the performance really. The mechanism then I've been quite generous on because I've given it four stars when really I think it might ought to have been a three because of those dodgy front pickups. However, A, the front pickups have been fixed on newer releases of this and B, it's not that detrimental anyway because you've got full all wheel pickup anyway, so it's not like we're having to rely on the front bogey wheels. The other drop down, of course, is because of the traction tyres. I really don't like traction tyres, as I've demonstrated many times. That leads us on to the quality then, which was the biggest problem with this model. Unfortunately, the way these are assembled left quite a lot to be desired. You tend to get messy glue marks if you're unlucky, and uh, yeah, bits drop off all the time. It just doesn't feel like a good model. It crumples in your hands, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. And there are other parts of the design which are a bit poor quality as well, particularly the loco and tender connection, as I've said, which is very inconvenient to use at best and also very easy to damage at worst. So the quality is not great, a big letdown, really. Value for money then, so for £160.99, yes, you get a lot of die cast and you get a lot of detail for your money. So in that sense, it is a decent purchase. However, obviously the poor quality does mean that it's not worth anywhere near that much in my opinion. Though I did find on Hattons that these are for sale, or a different livery of this is for sale for £127.50, which I think is a lot more a lot more like it. If you really want a schools class and you're willing to risk it, you do have a chance, of course, of getting a really good quality one that's been assembled properly. And in that eventuality, I think you'd be quite pleased with this. So yeah, I've given it a middle of the road 3 out of 5. Not great value, but not terrible. Overall then, that is 7.66 out of 10, a very decent score, into the ranking it goes, 23rd just above the Railroad County class and below the Mahano Canadian National. Of course, this is a much higher calibre model than either of those, except the quality let it down a little bit. So it's a wonderful piece, isn't it? And you really have to applaud Hornby for attempting such levels of detail. As I say though, this was done quite a few years ago when Hornby weren't in a position to do that in a good way. Um, so yeah, given that this is a few years old, these models, they don't look it, do they? But I think more recent Hornby jobs have been much better in terms of quality and design. So yeah, overall, if they're a bit cheaper, I'd be recommending them wholeheartedly because obviously if you're buying brand new, if a model arrives damaged, it's your right to send it back for a replacement anyway. If you're thinking of buying one of these secondhand, I would strongly recommend not doing so because even new, you can't guarantee that they're going to arrive in perfect condition. Secondhand, I would say it's very unlikely. I got pretty lucky with this, all things considered. But brand new, I think you've got a much better chance. So overall, very happy. Very, very happy. But if you get one yourself, or if you've got one yourself, you'll probably already know this, but it's worth being extra careful with these because they are super duper fragile, but also super duper lovely too. But for the time being, I think that's more or less it. That's all I got to say. Go on then, let me know in the poll how many 440s you spotted in total. And uh, we'll see if everybody gets the right answer. For now though, thank you for watching, thank you for your time, I hope you enjoyed that, let me know in the comments what you thought, and I will see you very very soon. Enjoy the rest of the week folks, and I'll catch you next time. Take care.